Hello YouTube and welcome to the debut of the Recovery Channel. A few years ago, I made a video on my personal channel about recovering from a hernia operation. And it was very popular and a lot of people commented on how helpful it was. So I thought I would start making videos documenting people's recoveries for other kinds of medical procedures. I thought I would start with a surgery that my son had a few years back, a laparoscopic splenectomy or the removal of the spleen. He had a blood condition called spherocytosis. Spherocytosis is somewhat of a rare condition, but among other blood disorders, it's kind of common. Spherocytosis means round blood cells. Instead of having disc shaped or donut shaped blood cells, my son had round blood cells, kind of shaped like a ball. This caused him to have a few complications. First, he had a low blood count and the first few months of his life, he had to have several blood transfusions. And second, his spleen detected those round blood cells as defective and began to destroy them, enlarging his spleen. Both of these conditions were a bit dangerous and that's why he needed the splenectomy. We were scared parents. We even were at the point that we were considering maybe not having the procedure. However, the surgeon, Dr. Graciano, put our minds at peace. First, she told us about her own family and her own children. And she promised us that when she was performing the operation on our son, that she would give him the exact same care as if he was one of her own children. She taught us that the surgery would require four incisions three small incisions in the belly, a few centimeters in diameter, two would be for the surgical arms, and one would be for the camera, and then one larger incision to extract the spleen. They were going to put a bag around the spleen so that the pieces wouldn't dissipate in the body, chop it up into small pieces, and pull it out through the larger incision. She told us that he would fully recover within two weeks. But we weren't buying that. So we scheduled the surgery for 10 a.m. on Friday, October 5th, 2012. My son couldn't eat the day of the surgery, so as you can imagine, he was growing a little bit frustrated from hunger by 10 a.m. However, that wasn't the worst of it. The nurse came in and told us that the surgery was being delayed, and it ended up being delayed until 2 o'clock p.m. Now you adults out there that are listening, you probably could understand that you would be frustrated not being able to eat till 2 p.m. Imagine a five-year-old. It wasn't a pretty sight. But finally the time did come and he was taken to the operation room. The surgery lasted about two hours, although for us it seemed like an eternity. The first thing that I noticed when we were taken to the recovery room as we pulled his gown up to inspect the surgery site is that there were no stitches. The holes had been sealed with something called surgical glue. It looked clear like super glue. We also learned that it was waterproof so he was able to take a bath whenever he felt like it. All of the stitches that he had were internal and dissolvable. The doctors gave us two criteria in order for him to go home the following day. The first was that he was not allowed to take any of the strong medications that they were giving him for pain the day that he was to go home. I believe it was morphine, but I don't recall exactly what it was that they gave him. He was able to accomplish this criteria. The second criteria is that he had to walk down the hall unassisted to a toy room they had set up and back to his room. Although he looked like an old grandpa trying to walk down the hallway with his sore abdomen, he was able to do it successfully. As a matter of fact, he even mustered up the energy to play a little bit before walking back to his hospital bed. So we got to go home. The doctor recommended over the counter Tylenol to cope with the pain in the short term. She also prescribed a special type of penicillin 
that he would have to take two times a day, every day until he turns 18 to fight infection. By the time we got home, he was able to walk around just fine, only favoring his side a little bit. I think it was more because he thought it might hurt. Then, to our astonishment, after a few hours, he started up the stairs in search of his favorite toy. We let him go on upstairs to see what would happen. He successfully made it up the stairs, and as soon as he found his toy, he plopped right down on the floor without complaining about any pain. Within one week, not two, he was fully recovered. I want to say that after a week, things were back to normal, but in reality, they were much better than before. Before the surgery, he was always pale or even kind of had a green tint due to the loss of blood. After the surgery, he had a healthy bronze complexion. Before the surgery, he always had low energy. Afterward, we couldn't contain his high energy. Before the surgery, he was a finicky eater, and afterward, he had a healthy appetite. I wanted to share this story for any of you parents out there who are scared to your wits end in anticipation of an upcoming splenectomy for a child of yours. Hopefully, this video will help speak peace to you, and hopefully, your experience will be as eventless as ours, and the effects of the surgery will be equally as beneficial to your child as they have been for mine. If any of you are going through a situation similar to this one, please share your story with us in the comments below. Also, if you would like to see similar videos of other medical procedures or conditions, let me know which ones you're interested in hearing and I will try to find somebody who has experienced that condition and interview them. Thank you for watching my video today. Since this is my first video on the new channel, I don't have a tagline yet, but I'll make sure to let you guys know as soon as I do. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.